Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Bloom in the Desert Ministries, United Church of Christ and Reconciling Ministries Congregation in Palm Springs, California. We welcome you to this Sunday morning worship, as we have been doing for more than a year now, and we are grateful to be together with uh, our persons in worship leadership in various parts of the Coachella Valley and uh, you, wherever you are, uh, as we know, from coast to coast and north to south. So we appreciate that very much. Today in Bloom's Life is a Communion Sunday, and so we do invite you, if you wish to participate in that later in our service, that, and you are welcome to do so in our tradition, all are welcome. You are able to uh, have some uh, juice or wine, uh, bread uh, available for participation as your own elements as, as we are together in. I'm not going to call it virtual because that in some ways infers not real, <clears throat> but that we are online together in community uh, in this digital way. Uh, and so we are grateful that uh, the Holy Spirit can work with us uh, as our pixels join together. And, and create a reality in this, uh, in this uh, uh, online world. So join us on this Communion Sunday. As we do each week, we've lit a candle in our worship area as a symbol of Christ, the light of the world. This continues to be our Easter candle, our, our Christmas tide candle, as we are um, continue to be in the Easter tide season until Pentecost later on this month. And so we continue in this, uh, uh, Easter tide way and and uh, in this particular uh, fashion, we also um, encourage you, if you wish, to light a candle in your homes wherever you are, uh, to um, join us uh, in this way, uh, and as we are together, uh, sharing the light, knowing that at the end of our service, when candles are extinguished, it really isn't the responsibility of the candle to be the gospel in the world. It's our responsibility, and Jesus said. You are the light of the world and you take this light with you. As we continue in our lives as a United Church of Christ, we strive to live up to the modern motto that says, whoever you are and wherever you are on the journey of faith, you are welcome here. So we always extend our welcome as widely and generously as possible. <clears throat> and we want to, you know, reaffirm the fact that we welcome people uh, who are uh, straight and gay and bisexual, and that in the realm of gender identity, God, uh, God's creation reflects um, all of the identities of God and the identities of people. And we welcome people who are cisgender and transgender, gender non-declaring and gender non-binary. And also remember that in God's creation, uh, there are people who are intersex. And we, um, we, we do that in this uh, way to um, ensure that our welcome reflects the variety and diversity of God's creation. We know we come from a variety of backgrounds and, and perspectives, uh, experiences, and status in life, different health challenges, uh, different abilities, all of that. We welcome and we're glad that you're with us in this day. It's our desire to welcome people as you see yourself from the inside out, wherever you are on the journey, not an identity, uh, that we would foist upon you or from a place we think we think you should be uh, welcome. There are some, uh, I know folks are already doing it in the comment section there on Facebook, but please feel free to sign in and let us know who you're with. I mean, well, you're with yourselves, but that you're with us and uh, that uh, you may even tell us where you're from. If it's your very first time with us here uh, on a Sunday morning, please and you feel comfortable doing so, please make note of that so that we may welcome you appropriately. Um, and we are grateful for the way in which we've been able to have those communications. That's also a way to offer your prayer requests, your joys, your thanksgivings, as well as your concerns. And we want to uh, be able to share those if you're willing in this public forum to have those shared um, as we uh, participate in our prayer time later in the service. Remember, this is public, and so therefore be aware of privacy concerns. We are grateful for everyone who is participating in our service today in ways of leadership. We're grateful for Linda Toland and Carl Toland as they are providing us with our uh, liturgy worship, our litur liturgy leadership 
in our worship and we're grateful for Bill Wallace and Mike Shear as they are bringing our readings and for Linda Toland as she leads us in our offering prayer of dedication later in our service. Today, our musicians are Malcolm Swan, as you have seen already uh, on our piano, uh, as he was playing the pre-service music of I Give You My Heart and Love You So Much. And we are grateful also for our music director, Ken Forney, uh, and uh, the Bloom Tones Trio today, consisting of J.R. Rash, Phyllis Ramsey, and Brian Herman, singing, you know, leading us in our hymns and our responses this morning. We're grateful for everyone who's bringing this lovely gift of music uh, to be a part of our service. The flowers on the worship center today are symbolic of the living Christ and offered to the glory of God by Wayne Sinclair and John DiNapoli. They are given in memory of John and Doris Sinclair, Wayne's parents, and in honor of John's mother, Elizabeth Collins. Join us after worship for our hospitality time. You may find that link for Zoom in our uh, newsletter each week, electronic newsletter, Bloom Notes, which if you are not receiving it and would like to, you may sign up for on our website, bloominthedesert.org. And there is a box there you can put your email in and uh, start receiving that in the weeks to come. So we look forward to that worship time from about 11, from about, this is the Pacific time, about 11.15 to noon. Uh, so if you can be with us in that time, feel free to join us. We are grateful for this time of worship. And now as we um, uh, come to uh, the moment, let us transition from being um, scattered to being gathered in this very special way. Our music for centering uh, that helps us in this time uh, today is Arietta, played on the piano by Malcolm Swan. It's in this time, time that we bring our hearts and soul and mind and strength for the, get, for the worship of God and the caring for one another. And following this music for centering, our call to worship and further prayers will be led by Carl and Linda Toland uh, in the time to follow. Let us receive this music as our time of centering as we move into our time of worship. Please join us in our responsive call to worship. We gather this morning still remembering Easter morning's resurrection, which signals the coming of new life in ways beyond ordinary. We have faith that even in threats and changes to the cycles of life, we can recognize and celebrate new life in ways beyond the ordinary. O oh, compassionate maker of this new and wonderful reality, you are among us. Show us how to live and love in ways that help us thrive. Today, break us free from conventional thinking. So we rise again and again as Easter people. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Aloha, shalom. Salam, ping on, pause, p 
peace. Amen. Our opening hymn will be Lord, I Want to Be a Christian, led by our music director, Ken Forney, and the Bloom Tones Trio. The music may be found on your song sheets. This is the time in our worship when in faith we open our hearts to ministry with our prayer for good and growth. Faithful God of justice, our rock and our fortress, in an age when slander is mistaken for wisdom, pride masquerades as strength, and perjury defies truth, show us the way of integrity and faith. Give us courage to oppose all oppression in our land so that today and every day we may sing your praises with upright and loving hearts. God of grace and truth, when we hear your story, we wonder what to change for ourselves. While some still exploit others and some demand privilege or abuse power, we know this not only happens in society, it happens in churches too. Help us avoid practices that glorify self-importance rather than enhancing the value and dig dignity of others, especially the poor. Help us realize our own privilege that sometimes prevents us from being empathetic. Help us remember that Jesus emptied himself of power so he could be the empowering servant of all. Strengthen us to care more for inner attitudes than outward appearances. Teach us to help help rather than demand. Help us acquire the skills to build peace, integrity, and justice. 
Renew and refresh us with the gentle and selfless spirit of Jesus. So when we gather as his followers, have the same spirit in name and presence. Eternal source of love and creativity, receive now our silent prayer. To all our silent prayers, let the people say, Amen. Amen. Receive now these words of encouragement. God graced the world with reason in the form of Jesus Christ. God energizes us to create justice, so a new world of love and blessing is empowered. Amen. Let us now receive the word. Please join our musicians in singing our response, followed by Mike Shear presenting this morning's Hebrew scripture reading. scripture reading is this morning is from Psalm 22 verses 25 through 31. You are the theme of my praise in the great assembly and I will fulfill my vows in the presence of your worshipers. Those who are poor will eat and be satisfied. Those who seek you will give you praise long life to their hearts. The whole earth from one end to the other will remember and come back to you. All the families of the nations will bow down to you. For yours is the kingdom, you ruler of nations. Those who had feasted and devoured the poor, now they'll bow down. The most affluent in the land will kneel before you. They all go down to the dust and none can keep themselves alive. But my children will be faithful to you and they will be told about Yahweh for generations to come. They will come and proclaim your justice to a people yet unborn. All this Yahweh has done. Here ends the Hebrew scripture reading. After a moment for silent reflection, Bill Wallace will present our gospel reading. Good morning. Our reading today comes from the Gospel of John, chapter 15, verses 1 through 8. I am the true vine, and my Abba is the vine grower, who cuts off every branch in me that doesn't bear fruit, but prunes the fruitful ones to increase their yield. You've been pruned already thanks to the word that I have spoken to you. Live on in me as I do in you. As a branch cannot bear fruit of itself apart from the vine, neither can you bear fruit apart from me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who live in me and I in them will bear abundant fruit, for apart from me you can do nothing. Those who don't live in me are like withered, rejected branches, <clears throat> to be picked up and thrown on the fire and burned. If you live on in me and my words live on in you, 
Ask whatever you want and it will be done for you. My Abba will be glorified if you bear much fruit and thus prove to be my disciples. Here ends the reading of the gospel. This is the good news of Jesus Christ. Thanks be to God. Our commentary today will be presented by the Reverend Dr. Kevin A. Johnson. Thank you very much, Mike and Bill, for those readings, as well as Carl and Linda for leading us thus far in our liturgy and in our worship today. Let us continue as we are gathered and uh, pause for a moment of prayer and preparation. We're grateful, loving God, for this time of gathering as a community of faith, restoring our batteries for the, with the energy that we need for the week ahead, getting rid of the baggage and the uh, distractions that have attached themselves to us in the week just past. Bless us in this time with new hearts and new minds and new ways of thinking so that as we travel together in the future on this planet, we are doing uh, things that you call us to do. As Martin Luther King prayed so long ago, we just want to do your will. Bless us as we continue in this time and let it be that as the psalmist prayed so long ago, the meditations of our hearts and the words of my mouth are acceptable to you, O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. From third grade in 1961 through the 1976 New Year's Day morning, when I drove away to seminary after college, I lived next to a grapevine. My parents, uh, when my parents sold the home of my earliest memories and photographs and bought the one that we lived in at that time on Second Avenue, it was a financial move for them to get some cash during a factory workers union strike. The property that they purchased down on Second Avenue had a fence along the northern boundary and that had a mature grapevine. It was filled with purple grapes growing on it when we moved in. <clears throat> now that grapes were uh, determined and known to be no good for winemaking. For us, the main purpose for tending the vine was to preserve the privacy screen to the neighbor's yard next door. The grapes were for the birds. The old vine didn't produce good juice for the wine rack, but it certainly served a couple of useful purposes in the universe. So I figure it's good to keep in mind the thought that Bible-based directives need to be seen in context in order to measure their goodness. If you hear this parable that Bill just read in the way that some preachers and teachers present it, today's Bible reading sounds harsh, but I am here to squash that notion. The thing for us to remember is that the purpose of any Jesus story is to find and promote the love of God and the great potential for humanity. When Bible readings don't sound lovely, dovely, and all good shepherdy, some people get upset. Expectations of easy peasy spirituality are usually disappointed in the long run. Because preachers take a statement like the gospel reading today and use it to attack and manipulate people, it is only right that good thinkers would be suspicious about pruning talk. However, think of it in context. The people hearing this story from the Gospel of John were likely very familiar with winemaking as a source of their best beverage since water was not flowing from the kitchen and bathroom taps. Common table, uh, common table wine in that time was not as alcoholic as ours. It was common to have a bowl of so-called wine with a meal and not get drunk. 
drunkenness was actually a sign of bad wine, cheap and too strong. Grape growing was essentially and widely understood. Let's consider that when people hearing John's gospel imagined the vineyards, they had a broader metaphorical picture than we do. When we picture a vine growing, we must remember the tangles of branches and the abundance of leaves taking in the sun for the energy to produce the grapes and shading the grapes while they grow. The ancient disciples saw what we see. Only the application may be different. When we hear the gospel, I would guess we think that John's Jesus is speaking to individuals, and that is right so much, you know, uh, so it's so to a degree. And as the TV Barker says, but wait, there's more. I think John's gospel is talking about systems too. The Gospel of John's writer has a perspective of looking back seven decades when writing the vine concept. The writer reflects the tangled ways of thinking, the oppression that early Christians endured, plus the internal squabbles of the fledgling churches and among the church councils. There were strains over strands of doctrine and ordinary pressures of life. I figure we can rest assured that the people then, like people now, wondered if caring about religious belief and doing the work of faith was really worth all the effort. It was not a lovely, dovely, easy peasy time. Even as the new commandment was and remains for us to love one another. And as the example shows today, the work of the vineyard and of the church and of, wh of wherever you are, are at times, that work is difficult. Our thoughts will be doubtful. Our ordinary callings may even be distressing and our bodies may be hurting. But that does not mean we are diverted, deluded, or divided. It means we are reality-based and want the new world of God to be faithful. We want that world to be faithful to the ancient wisdom and values we inherited from our forebears. I read an article the other day about a television writer named Court Je Jefferson, who is taking up as his TV programming mission to try to get people to think more deeply. He recalled an experience when he was young and his parents realized how he was in his own mind going along with the crowd in his thinking. And one day they challenged his typical reactions to things in such a way that it taught him to think deeper about people and life issues. And it taught him to think that they are more definitely, they are definitely more complex than typically portrayed in the corporate media. Being challenged to think more deeply about the complexities of our lives is not a way of scaring us or caring less or putting anyone down. Thinking more deeply adds care and enables us to extend our welcome more broadly. Thinking more deeply about Bible passages like this one we have today will help us be better and do better at applying the ancient wisdom to our contemporary issues and situations. For me, the central message of this passage comes when John's Jesus tells his audience who have been existing for 70 years without the physical presence of Jesus among them. John's Jesus says, just as a branch cannot bear fruit of itself apart from the vine, neither can you bear fruit apart from me. As a Christian church community, we cannot bear fruit for anyone other than the birds when we are not connected to Jesus as the head of our church and the primary teacher of our faith heritage. 
The point for us now is that if we want to look for how to be who we say we are and want to be, we look to Jesus for the juice. I do not know all the answers. Bible Bites people know that for sure. I do not know all the answers, but I am certain that the bunches of questions of our day can be brought into the presence of Jesus for pressing. And when it comes time for us to share the cup of reconciliation and justice in the way that Jesus did, in the Jesus way, we sometimes may not like the way the new wine tastes. But the way of Jesus is what leads us to places of comfort and joy accompanied by times of challenge and disturbance. And verily, verily, it is true that the connection in this way may inspire and cause us to rethink our customary beliefs and change our long-held assumptions. Even when we are called to change our thinking for the betterment of humanity, there are times when we will feel like we're losing something. And you know what? We are. Let it go. That's when we are pruning away the dead branches that sap our goodness and block our views of the way things can be for the better. We are losing old attitudes and conventional notions that may have been assumptions, but now we know are wrong. We are taking steps on the eternal journey toward that day which God promises among the prophets and puts in front of us through Jesus when justice and love are truly guiding all of our decisions. Remember, remember the Psalm? Those who are poor will eat and be satisfied. Those who seek you will give you praise, long life to their hearts. The whole earth from one end to the other will remember and come back to you and all the families of the nations will honor you. As a local congregation, we are dealing with some complex plans and issues as we move out of pandemic reaction and into forward looking plans to be the people we say we are. Our vision, mission and value statements are not conventional ways of thinking. So at times, the situations we find ourselves in are difficult to navigate. So long as we continue to keep as our North Star the love of God is given to us in Christ, we will find our way in good ways. It is neither ironic nor coincidental that this I am true vine Jesus story comes to us on a communion Sunday. Instead, it's opportune. As we share in the juice or wine and in the bread, we can connect with our creation and creator once again. We can say, I'm in to the one who did whatever it took to create the grapes. We can say thank you to the one who gives us air to breathe and the sunlight and water for the vines to grow. And we can say to each other, all tangled together, that we will stay connected to Jesus and do some good with ourselves. Thanks be to God. Amen. Now is a time in our service when we join our hearts and soul and mind and strength together for the worship of God and the care for each other with our prayers. We offer our concerns and our joys and our thanksgivings. I will uh, provide those that have been listed on the uh, comment section in Facebook uh, in a public way. And then we will pause for a few seconds uh, in order for those of us who have things on our hearts to be able to offer those and then from our minds. Uh, and, and then um, we will say together uh, in each of those sections, so we'll say it twice, God receive our prayer. And then our musicians will lead us in a sung response.
So let us be in this time of prayer together. Among our concerns, we pray for health and peace to all bloomers who are having, having health challenges, including our bloom friend, Keisha D. We pray healing thoughts for Brian Herman. We offer prayers for Mindy and Pete's daughter, Robin, and her family and for Mindy's dad. We offer prayers for the 32.4 million cases and the 576,000 deaths of COVID-19. We offer prayers for the families and friends of the more than 40 persons killed at the Israeli celebration on Mount Moron in Northern Israel. We offer prayers for the people of Northeastern Wisconsin who are most affected by the most recent gun violence in our nation. We offer prayers for Jack McClellan's sister, Pat, recovering from a stroke and her family becoming caregivers. We offer prayers for the people of India that they may receive enough vaccines to recover from COVID-19. And we offer prayers for our neighbors to the north in Canada as they struggle with many places that are hotspots of COVID-19 outbreak, as well as those that remain in our own country. We offer prayers for Earl Perry and family as his sister-in-law passed away this morning. And to all of our prayers together we say, God receive our prayer. This morning, among our joys, we express happy birthday to Keisha D and, and her daughters. And we hear from Rod, Rod being thankful that his back is feeling better. We give thanks for the leaders of our congregation as they consider complex matters as we decide to move forward in our mission and ministry in this location and our, throughout our country and around the world. We give thanks for the grace of God that heals us and blankets us to help us regain confidence whenever we feel weak. And we offer thanksgiving for forgiveness wherever and whenever it comes our way and wherever and whenever we are able to give it. And together with these thoughts, and prayers in our minds and hearts, we say, God, receive our prayer. Amen.
We are grateful this morning for all the many ways in which folks come together to support the ministry and mission of this congregation. Well, the mission of this congregation, which is ministry. We're grateful for those who have used the various methods for supporting our congregation in these days uh, through donating through our website, bloominthedesert.org, using the donate button, for texting using the 800 number and entering a something, entering an amount in the message line, for those who are regularly sending gifts through the mail, and we're grateful for those, including those who have been responding to the special appeal for Easter that will be, that is running through, uh, continues, and uh, we are open to receiving those gifts for the Easter offering um, through Pentecost, as that helps us uh, in the summer, and we're grateful for those who have established accounts through their bank and, and are able to send automated, um, automated donations in that way, as well as those who have accessed um, uh, retirement accounts and so forth in order to take care of, take the tax advantages associated with that, but more importantly, in order to express their giving uh, in, in, in a way that they are able. So we are grateful for this. And now as we pause for a moment of uh, meditation, we receive this music from Malcolm Swan on piano uh, as our offertory meditation music. It is entitled Morning Prayer. Please join me in saying our prayer of dedication. Your love, O oh God, is perfected in us through the gift of your chosen one, Christ Jesus. Accept what we offer to you as we respond to Christ's loving kindness and enhance what we do so that others may experience your tenderness. Cultivate us to bear more fruit to the glory of your name. Amen. Please join our musicians in singing our doxology, followed by Rev Kev and Mike Shear leading us in the Great Thanksgiving. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise God all creatures here below. together in the great thanksgiving as i say god is with you and also with you let us lift our hearts we lift them to our god let us give thanks and praise this is a good and joyful thing to do blessed are you god of resurrection and hope christ has risen in glory and shines on us now the night no longer has power over us and every dawn is a sign that your light will show the way 
that leads to eternal life with you. Blessed are you, O God. All creation is reborn in Jesus Christ, the risen Lord. Blessing and praise to God forever. It is right and good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give you praise, all loving God, creator of energy and matter, heaven and earth. Long ago, you renewed your rainbow covenant with every living creature by entering our realm in the person of Jesus. He gave us your unconditional love and this mandate. I give you a new commandment, love one another, and you are to love one another the way I have loved you. This is how all will know that you are my disciples, that you truly love one another. Therefore, we celebrate you, joining our voices with the wind and streams and animals and flowers and living and dead, the stars and the planets and all the company of all creation who forever sing their unending hymn to proclaim your glory. <laughs> santo, 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 me corazón te adoro. Me corazón te sabe decir, Santo eres Dios. Holy, 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 my heart, my heart adores you. My heart is glad to say the words. You are holy God. We remember that on the night Jesus was betrayed by one whom he loved, the night before he was killed by ones who feared him, he sat at table with his friends, women and men and children, sharing the feast of the Passover, which is the celebration of the liberation of God's people. Remembering God's power, Jesus took bread, and after he had given thanks and blessed it, he broke it, saying, This is the, my work and my life, for you and with you. Take it, all of you, and do this, remembering me. After dinner, Jesus took the Elijah cup, the cup that was traditionally reserved for the Holy One, to come. But instead of waiting, Jesus passed it to them, as it is now being passed among us. And he said to them, This is the cup of the new covenant. It is the cup of justice and peace poured out for all. Drink of it, all of you, and do this remembering me. Each time we break bread together, we participate in the body of Christ, the body of the risen Christ, for we are the body of the risen Christ. And each time we share this cup, we participate in the new community, for we are God's hope of the new community. For this, we ask your blessing. Pour out your spirit on us and on these gifts of grain and grape that in this sharing, we recognize Christ in our midst. This offering of praise and thanksgiving is an offering of us to you. Hasten the day when the prophet's dreams come to pass, when justice rolls down like waters and nations no longer threaten each other, neither shall they learn war anymore. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. These are the gifts of God for the people of God presented both here and in your homes. In this community, we share an inclusive communion. You need not be a member of this congregation or any community of faith to join us at the table today in the now. We share this sacrament historically, begun so many, many years ago, continuing through the many e decades and eons 
until we are in this very moment now. We share this globally as people all around the earth are share in this particular sacrament. And it may be that we don't agree with one another. We don't all speak the same language. We don't all have the exact same practices. And yet we do this. And we do this personally in such a way that it means something to every one of us in a unique way, as well as something in general and as extravagantly welcoming as possible. We do this for renewal, for restoration, for healing, for peace, for inspiration, as well as motivation. For we believe that Christ is the host. Christ sets the table and Christ welcomes all. Let us come, for God's table is ready. Our communion music this morning is Blessed Assurance, played on the piano by Malcolm Swan. Let us be in this time of communion together. As our prayer after communion, let us now pray together the prayer given to us from Jesus. I'm using more traditional as well as inclusive words today. You please pray the prayer in the language and words that you find most comforting and most familiar. Let us pray. Our mother, father, creator, God in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom, your dream come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and the bread that we need for tomorrow. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil which can be our very selves. For yours is the kingdom, the realm, the dream, and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our hymn of sending this morning is Love Divine, All Loves Excelling, led by our musicians, and the music may be found on your song sheet.
blessing and benediction. Our worship is ended. Our service begins. What does God need from us? Simply do justice, love kindness, and walk humbly with your God. Fear no evil, for God our shepherd journeys with us. Love one another as Christ abides in you. Be filled with the Holy Spirit as witness to divine love. We will go now to share compassion and pursue justice in the world. My dear friends in faith, will you go from here and be the people of God in Christ's name? We will. Amen. So let us offer, wherever we are, signs of grace and peace to ourselves and to the ones we are with, and go in peace. Amen. <laughs>